I want to kind of move into our examples of uh, some of the COVID-19 um, cyber attacks that we've seen to date. Um, we're not going to belabor each and every one of these, but um, these are, uh, again, pulled from our resource with Know Before. Um, they've put together a nice uh, set of examples. Um, so we haven't seen all of these ourselves in the wild, um, but we have seen our fair share of them and just the different angles um, that they're taking. I mean, obviously representing the World Health Organization, even down to very targeted attacks on, um, you know, absenteeism. So knowing that people aren't in the office um, you know, and doing business the way that they're normally doing. So they're seeing more um, threats for, you know, pretending to be the IT department or pretending to be uh, a high level manager or in the C-suite and saying, you know, I need to get things done. You know, we need to get this application filed for the CARES Act and things like that. Um, you know, basically taking advantage of this situation and the fact that, you know, people are getting still settling into and getting used to the new way of doing work uh, remotely and not having, um, you know, that close physical connection where they might walk over to somebody's office and say, hey, does this look legit? Um, you know, they might they might not not think twice about it in this particular scenario because everybody is working through email and collaboration tools and, and things like that. So um, so there's certainly a. Uh, a ton of examples, um, you know, as we cited, the spike in in March alone was pretty significant. And uh, anytime there's something like this, uh, we we see the attackers kind of um, taking full advantage and, and ramping up their efforts to see if they can, uh, you know, kind of kick you while you're down, uh, for lack of a better term. So, Brian, I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to that. I know that you put together. Um, a nice example that I think eventually went into our company blog or one of our social media uh, sites about uh, you know some of the stuff we've been seeing. Um, no, I mean certainly a little bit to add here. I think you covered it pretty nicely. Um, you know, I think one thing to take advantage of is anything that the FBI is. You know, they put out their flash alerts. They're referred to as anything they're alerting on is obviously something that's bubbling up for a pretty significant level for them to get involved and put out um, a public communication on. And most recently, they've talked about, you know, warning about the teleconferencing. Um, so as you were talking about with Zoom, and then anything related to, you know, online classrooms and hijacking those situations to taking advantage of anything related to COVID-19. So, you know, it's unfortunate that it happens. We see it all the time, whether it, you know, was, you know, recent events where Hurricane Harvey or something like the Marathon bombing, where anytime there's any sort of incident or, you know, public tragedy, unfortunately, the bad guys see that just as an opportunity to sweep in and say, you know, okay, people are going to be clicking on information related to this. They're going to want to donate to charities. Um, in this case, you know, they're knowing that all these people are going to be working from home. You know, maybe the CEO you know, really, you know, walks down the hall and talks about sending that wire out or, you know, processing that payment. And now he's sending that email. So business email compromise um, is a big concern at this time. Um, and the other angle of that is if you're a MSP or, you know, another vendor or service provider, you know, you're becoming targets too. You know, the, even, even the heightened target now, same reason. The bad guys, the fraudsters, the hackers, they know that, you know, these other businesses are relying upon you more and more. So it might be something saying, you know, hey, where you're right, you know, it could go, it goes in both directions of saying, hey, I'm your IT provider and I need to remote to your machine. And that's, you know, a malicious email or it could be an email to that IT support provider saying, hey, I'm such and such that works with, you know, I work at Greyhawk and I can't get on my work computer. Um, you know, can you have this? And now they're they're attacking the vendor in that way. Um, so again, it's just yeah. being vigilant that the situation is constantly evolving and anything related to the current news cycle or something that's front and center like that, the uh, fraudsters will try to take advantage of. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just on your last point, uh, being an MR, uh, MSP ourselves, um, we've seen both of those types of attacks. We've seen people impersonating us from a support perspective, but also um, 
are from an admin perspective um, sending fake invoices uh, or invoices appearing to be from us and saying, hey, you know, um, due to the situation, um, we're now kind of moving to this uh, invoicing system, um, you know, because we don't have anybody at the office or whatever the language might be. So there, you know, there's multiple attempts just that we've seen um, with our own brand. Um, on our customers and some of them you know might not necessarily be our customers but you know the attackers thought it was you know worth the effort and worth it worth a try um but um yeah it's certainly a very real uh attack vector that we're seeing out there again just exploiting you know, the changes to um that everybody's dealing with